Don Shula and his reaction to the weather. We know that anything can happen weather-wise. We played in three cold games this season. Practice in a blizzard. We have to be prepared for any condition. For Green Bay, when they practice, they can move indoors. They practice them outdoors to make sure of the weather, but they can practice indoors. And uh, their coach, Forrest Craig, opened all the doors indoors so the players would not forget what the weather conditions were <laughs> all about. how cold it really was. And the players were not that thrilled. Al Del Greco of Green Bay will be kicking off. Lorenzo Hampton is the deep back on the return for the Miami Dolphins. Lambeau Field. Green Bay, Wisconsin. With light snow flurry. And Hampton at the 11-yard line. To the 20. And returns to the 29-yard line. John Dorsey was there for Green Bay. Let's look at the offense. Dan Marino, the quarterback number 13, with Tony Nathan and Woody Bennett, the two running backs. And the pair of marks, Duper and Clayton, the wide receivers. Bruce Hardy, the tight end. That offensive line, John Geisler is going to start. Still is the knee problem. We're not, you just go as long as he can. Foster, Stevenson, Clark, and Lee. And as those of you that follow the Dolphins know, it's kind of a makeshift offensive line. As they have all kinds of injuries. And we look for Marino to come out and throw it. Pass is complete to Tony Nathan. Nathan to the 38-yard line. It'll be second down and a, and a yard to go for the first down. A pickup of nine yards on the play. Let's look at that defense for the Green Bay Packers with Alfonso Carriker, Donnie Humphrey, and Ezra Johnson. That's the basic front three. The four linebackers, Anderson, Scott Noble, and Douglas. And the secondary for the Packers, Mark Lee, Tim Lewis, Mark Murphy, and Tom Flynn. Second down and a yard to go. Woody Bennett. Bennett leads to the 40-yard line. He's got two in the first down. Mike Douglas and Randy Scott bring him down. We mentioned that John Geisler, offensive tackle number 65, has a knee problem. John Geisler did not practice all week long. There you see him 79 on Ezra Johnson. And then Woody Bennett picks up the first down. He did not practice all week long, and up until last night, it was doubtful that he was going to play. But he knows that they're in the hunt, and he's going to play as long as he can. First down, Miami. The ball at their own 40-yard line. Ball game just underway. We're a minute and 25 seconds into the action. Little play action fake. And pass to Tony Nathan. Drop. Oh. You cannot be more open. They push the coverage deep. Because of Duper, and Tony Nathan was wide open, and he would have run clear to the 50-yard line and dropped the ball. And that may be one of the things hurting Miami because of the conditions. So it's second down and 10. Don Johnson checks in, a tight end for the Dolphins. covers big turnover Reno's dropping straight back now they're covering both outside receivers has good protection he lays the ball off to Dupa Dupa is going to try to pick up the first down he's being tackled right now and the ball pops loose and 55 Randy Scott recovers the fumble and it was Mike Douglas who caused the fumble Green Bay at their own 49 Zorn, the quarterback. Just a cut. First down. Langford with the tackle. Miami's 39, a gain of 12. Offensively, Jim Zorn replacing Lynn Dickey. Dickey has the next spasm. Running backs, Eddie Lee Ivory, Jesse Clark. James Lawson and Phillip Epps, two flyers on the outside. And Paul Coffin, excellent tight end. Swanky, Moran, Cannon, Hallstrom, and Cook. That offensive line for Green Bay. They're going to mark it at the 40-yard line rather than the 39. They come back to the same side with Lee Ivory carrying to the 
43-yard line, gain of seven, second down and three, and Hugh Green makes the tackle. Let's look at the Dolphin defense, basic 3-4 set. Will be Doug Betters, Mike Charles, and Kim Bocamper, the front three. The linebackers, Rudzinski, Brophy, Brown, and Green. And in the secondary, Langford, Judson, Blackwood, and Brown. Second down and three. And we have whistle sound. Mark Brown is hurt. My inside linebacker from Miami. And they're going to get a timeout, number 51. And he's going to be replaced by number 50. Uh, Jackie Ship. Jackie Ship. And this is an injury timeout, not charged, to the Miami Dolphins. So they, like the Green Bay Packers, will retain three timeouts. And we will try and have an injury report on Mike Brown just as soon as possible. In the meantime, Jim Zorn came to the sideline, a quick conference with Forrest Gregg, and he comes back out. Second down and three. Jesse Clark and Eddie Lee Ivory are the two running backs. Play action fake. They fake the delay and go deep in the corner. Good coverage by William Judson. Epps, the intended receiver. It'll be third down and three as we bring it back to the 33. It's a play action pass, and Jim Zorn lets it go. The ball is thrown deep to the outside. Now watch Judson go up, and Epps actually had an opportunity to catch that football and dropped it. Would have been an outstanding catch, but you like to see receivers make those plays in the end zone. Third down and three, two tight ends on the offensive set. Zorn sideline pattern is complete first down at the 21 yard line Lofton pulled it in and Lankford had the defensive coverage right at the 21 gain of 12 yards report on Mike Brown a peach nerve in his neck and he should return Green Bay, trying to capitalize on the first turnover of the ball game. Play action fake. Going with time, throws to Clark over the middle of the man that he faked to. Picks up six yards to the 15. It'll be second down and four as Jay Brophy brings him down. Well, the intention of Green Bay right now is to run the football. That's going to help Jim Zorn, and they're going to throw some play-action passes and just maximize Jim Zorn's patience. Because as we said on the top, Miami has had problems defending the run all year long. Gary Ellis checks into the offensive set, and Eddie Lee Ivory comes out. So it's Clark and Ellis, the two running backs. That is Gain of seven, Bud Brown with the tackle. First down, goal to go. Jesse Clark follows 65. Ron Hallstrom, who looks like a grand piano, and he knocks Jay Brophy right out of the hole, and Green Bay is going to run this football until Miami stops him, and that may take three hours. Eddie Lee Ivory back in the ball game. So Ivory and Clark with the two running back. Eight-yard line. First down, goal to go. The defense is there. Clark brought down by Jackie Shep. And the first really big defensive play for the Dolphins in the ballgame. Jackie Shep broke through clean on the blitz. They were trying to blow up Green Bay's running game. And that's a big play. And Green Bay now needs to make sure they protect to come out of this fumble with at least a field goal. Loss of two to the ten, second down goal to go. Two tight ends. And out of bounds. Epps goes out at the five, so it's third down goal to go at that point. And William Judson was right there for Miami.
And Epps is a, a true speedster. He has run while he was in college at TCU and electronically timed 10 1 100 meters and electronically timed 20.1 200 meters. 5'9 155 pounder. Again, two tight ends of the offense and set third down goal to go. Five yard line. Remaining back is Jesse Clark. Zorn will be thrown. As pressure has to get rid of it too soon. Kaufman was the short receiver, Epps the deep receiver on that side. And the field goal team comes in, we'll take another look. Paul Kaufman. You can see now takes an inside release and likes to go to the tight end here. He bounces off Glenn Blackwood, but the ball is thrown too high. Had he hit Kaufman, he might have worked his way into the end zone. And now, after the duper fumble, Green Bay has an opportunity to pick up a field goal. 23-yard field goal attempt. Mark Cannon to snap. Jim Zorn to hold. Al Del Greco to attempt it. And it is good from 23 yards away. We've got a timeout. And the Green Bay Packers have the lead. 8.55 left to go. We're in the first quarter. Green Bay 3, Miami nothing. This is Charlie Jones, Sam Retigliano here at Lambeau Field yesterday, Sam. We were watching the snow clean up. I watched it. They had, uh, they waited till the end of the week in case there was some more snow, and then they cleared every, they cleared everything out on Saturday. And the field is in excellent condition today. And this is a slide. They just kind of slide the snow down, put it in the aisles, slide it right down below the seats, and then carry it out. I tried to go down a slide myself, but I didn't have a ticket. <laughs> Aldo Greco kicking off. And Lorenzo Hampton at the six-yard line. To the 20 to 25-30. Great return. Just what Miami needs here. Preston Denard of the Green Bay Packers took him out of bounds at the 44-yard line. 38 yards on this return. Hampton feels the ball inside the 10. Now watch him take it up and find the crack. And there's the crack right there. He's got good speed, causes a miss, and brings the ball up to the 45-yard line for, Green, uh, for uh, Miami. Woody Bennett. Five yards from the 44 to the 49. Second down of five, Randy Scott with the tackle. Now, Sam, we've seen two plays for Miami when they had the ball in offensive first opportunity, a drop pass and a fumble, both attributable to the weather conditions. No question about it. We talked earlier that you just can't simulate these conditions. But Miami has not practiced in it all week long, and Green Bay has. And it's already hurt Miami. Dan Johnson tied in in the ball game, second down and five. Reno has time. Pass is complete to Cooper, and he is right at the first down marker. He may have it. Brian Noble was there. Carriker was there. And now let's go to Ahmad Rashad for an NFL update. It was a little low, but a scoreless ball game there. Here you see Green Bay capitalizing on the turnover. Randy Scott recovered the fumble, and then the field goal by Al Del Greco from 23 yards out, and that makes it a 3-0 ball game. And it is a first down. Marino finds Cooper right on the sideline, and he had the first down. He circles back to the inside, and he stayed there and turned to the outside. It's always good for a receiver to turn to the outside because there are no defenders there. He would have had his first down. So he got it both times. Lorenzo Hampton comes in. Tony Nathan comes down to the offensive set. Green Bay 46-yard line. The second back through is Hampton, and he is decked by Ezra Johnson. He'll get a yard to the 45. It'll be second down and nine. We've talked about the weather conditions. We've talked about the early effect of the ball game. I remember when Larry Zaka was playing for the Dolphins. He told me that in November and December, when teams came to Miami, they always felt that they could win because they had worked in the heat of the humidity, and in the fourth quarter, the other teams would wilt. 
So it was a mental advantage as well as a physical advantage. Here, I think Green Bay has that same thing, that same kind of advantage, just reverse the weather condition. They're used to it. They practice it. Reno with a little bit of pressure. Goes as a first down. 28-yard line. 17 yards on the play. John Anderson with the tackle. And Mark Duper pulls it in at the 28. Reno is dropping back. And he's going to roll out now to his left. He gets some pressure. Gisla turns Johnson inside. Now this is what he does best. He finds open receiver. He has great presence. And he sees the entire field. Miami trying to move 56 yards to take a lead of the ball game. Started at drone 44 with an excellent return by Lorenzo Hampton. And here's Tony Nathan back in the action. And he has three yards to the 25. It'll be second down and seven as John Anderson makes the tackle. Dan Johnson comes in. Bruce Hardy comes out rotating the tight ends in the offense of the Miami Dolphins. Five minutes and 40 seconds. That is the time remaining here in the first quarter. It is Green Bay three and Miami nothing. They mark the spot at the 26, so it's second down and eight. Let's come and just cut off. Marino can run for the first down. He slides. He may have needed to take another step. Ryan Noble, the rookie from Arizona State, was there to cover him. They'll mark it at the 20-yard line. So it'll be third down and actually about a yard and a half to go for the first down. Marino was going to Clayton to his right. Now everything is rolled right to the inside. He sees an open field. Should I? Shouldn't I? Yes, I am. But now I'm going to slide. There's no way in the world I'm going to get any contact with those green jerseys. And, of course, with the rule changes, you slide, beat first, the defense has to stay off of the quarterback. I like that. Third down, about a yard and a half to go for the first down. Over the top is Tony Nathan. I don't think he made it. Donny Humphrey was there to meet him. It's going to be close, and if he, had, if he didn't make it, I think Shula will go for it rather than the field goal attempt. Offensive line now has to have a good surge. Have to have a good surge, and 90 stuffs the hole, Ezra Johnson. Although he didn't make the play, he had a lot to do with the stop. And Randy Johnson was there to cover right, Randy Scott coming right up over the top. And they're going to go for it. I believe they'll go for it. Fourth down, less than a foot. These are the three teams in contention East Miami, the Jets, and New England. New England leading. No score, Jets Buffalo, and here, Miami Trailer. Fourth down and inches. The short yardage specialist, the rookie from Louisville, picks it up. Mark Lee makes the tackle. And that's what you have to have. You have to have that big, strong back 30 as he bounces to the outside to pick up that critical yardage. Miami has been missing that since they lost Larry Zonka. And I believe it was a good call because if it comes time in the game, it's okay to gamble. You just have to know when to gamble. It goes for a gain of three to the 16, and it's first down Miami. Trailing 3-0 three with three minutes and 24 seconds now left in the first quarter. Reno, all the time in the world, drops it off to Hampton. Gain of three to the 13. John Anderson, outside left linebacker, was there. Second down and seven. Let's check the scoreboard. See what else is going on today. So many. I think every game counts today. What is this? Cincinnati 16 and Dallas nothing in the first quarter. What that has that has connotations to all teams. St. Louis seven. New Orleans nothing. And St. Louis is having a terrible year. K 
Kansas City 7, Atlanta another. That may be the only game that doesn't count today. To those two coaches. Except to the coaches, you're right. Second and seven. Reno again with great protection. Mark Clayton pulls it down at the 10-yard line. Gain of three will be third down and four. The strong safety, Mark Murphy, out of West Liberty, was there. It was a delay, and Marino waited for the possibility of going deep. Watch Marino now. He's looking to go deep to his tight end. Now he finds to a Clayton to the outside, throws the ball a little too high, makes a nice catch. He probably would have been able to run for first down had he thrown that ball a little lower. Third down and four, 10-yard line. Look, look for them to go to Nat Moore, number 89. Over the middle, touchdown, Tony Nathan. He slipped away from the linebacker. They doubled both outside receivers. Tony Nathan was a, Tony Nathan was an inside receiver. They're in a shotgun formation. Both outside receivers are being doubled. Now watch Nathan now beat That's Alphonse Carica, 76, yes. for a touchdown. What happened there is they must have been blitzing linebackers, and Alphonse Carica had coverage on the running back, and Marino has tremendous vision, and he saw him for the touchdown. Extra point attempt by Juan Reves is blocked. Miami 6, Green Bay 3, with 1 minute and 48 seconds left to go, first quarter. Let's go back to the extra point attempt. Strzok has the ball down. Now watch Ravaz. Watch how he hits the ball, and watch the trajectory. The ball should be going up right now, and it does. It does not, and I believe the kicker's trajectory caused the block, and that may stare them in the face. He got it too high on the ball. So it stayed low rather than being underneath the ball and going up. That's right. He should have hit the sweet spot, and if you get too high on the ball, the ball doesn't go up as fast as it should. Reves kicking off to either Epps or Ellerson. And it'll be taken by Philip Epps. Here he goes. Oh, he can fly. 42-yard line. Jackie Ship got him, but the Packers have great field position. Is lightning. All he needs right now is for everybody to get out of his way. Now watch. He finds the crack, gets an excellent block. The kicker's not going to make the tackle. Whoops. The <laughs> kicker helps make hey, the tackle. Yeah. All right. 36 yards on the kickoff return by Epps. First down at the 42. Jesse Clark, the remaining back. Backers trailing for the first time in the ballgame. Epps in motion. And Clark again running to the right side. A gain of seven to the 49-yard line. Bud Brown with the tackle. Hallstrom is Forrest Gregg's type of offensive lineman. Watch him pull right now, and wham, right there. He knocks the linebacker down, Bob Brzezinski, and they get eight yards on the play. Green Bay continues to run, and they continue to run to their offensive right. Second and three, Epps in motion to the left side. And they come back again, running to the right side. This is Eddie Lee Ivory. And he has a yard to the 50. So it'll be third down and two yards to go for the first down. Hugh Green with the tackle, and we've got another score in. Kansas City now leading Atlanta, 14 to nothing, first quarter at Arrowhead Stadium. Here we have 37 seconds and counting. That is the time remaining as we're winding up the first period of play. And Miami is in front of Green Bay, 6-3. to three. And Green Bay's going to take a timeout. Third down and two. They don't want to take, they don't want to make a mistake here. That's exactly what it is. Even though they have only 28 seconds left to go, they were running down on the 30-second clock. We've got a timeout. And we'll be back in just a moment to Lambeau Field. He's in Miami. But we're not in Miami. We're in Green Bay, it is 27, 50 degrees colder. Blake Moore, now the offensive center for the Packers. Third down and 
two at the 50 yard line. Jordan to throw. As time over the middle is complete. First down. Oh, he just barely got it, too. 46 yard line, they'll mark it. Going to F and dropped immediately by Glenn Blackwood. Epps was not the primary receiver. They threw a three-yard pass to Epps. They were trying to get the ball outside. But that is a very key first down. And we come to the end of the first quarter with the score, Miami 6 and Green Bay 3. One of the things that we've noticed in the ball game is that Green Bay is not applying pressure to Marino. They're not rushing him. They're, they're dropping back and trying to cover the two wide receivers. Why this change in philosophy? Well, they just felt after the Chicago game, you just couldn't get to Marino. And they're trying now to cause some indecision by covering Duper and Clayton. And it's obvious right now that Marino is very decisive. And I look for Green Bay possibly to change the strategy. Green Bay with the ball at the Miami 46-yard line, first down. Epps coming in motion, and Doran throws the pass, is complete to James Lofton, and Lofton is out of bounds at the 37-yard line. So it'll be second down and a yard to go for the first down. Jim Zorn, the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, in case you joined us late, Lynn Dickey scheduled to start, but Thursday afternoon in the weight room, came down with neck spasm, had to be treated in the hospital, and he's just hurting too much, cannot play, and Zorn is started. It is Zorn's third start since joining Green Bay, and he hands off to Jesse Clark. A yard to the 36, he may have the first down, Mike Charles making the tackle. Mark Cannon has been a pleasant surprise at center for Green Bay. I watch him on Mike Charles. He stands him up, but Charles comes off the block, but Jesse Clark is very strong, and he comes very close to the first down. Tom Dooley, the referee, taking a timeout. We'll have the measurement. There has not been a flag in the ballgame. And we're moving along at a very rapid clip. Charlie, be quiet now. The officials might hear you. <laughs> the statistics in the first quarter. Rushing about equal. Passing a little to the Dolphin side. Total yards to the Dolphin side. Time of possession to Miami side. And Miami leads by three, 6-3. Six, three. The two hidden statistics are the two kickoff returns. The one kickoff return by Miami gave him tremendous field position, which gave him the touchdown. And then, of course, the kickoff return by Epps at 36 yards. The Green Bay started this drive at their own 42. Going at pressure, a late screen to the tight end and left. Football. Miami has it. Jay Brophy. Recovers the fumble. So the turnovers now have evened up at one apiece. This is a very fine play, screen play. Now back up, he finds the tight end, Ed West. Ed West has plenty of room. Look at all those green jerseys, get some excellent blocks, and there's the hit right there where the ball bounced out, and Jay Brophy was around the football, and he came up with a key fumble at this stage in the game. The temperature, 27 degrees. That's the Fort Howard paper plant, right? And the visibility is better because we can see it now. At kickoff, it's hard to see. And I think that the thermometer is frozen. I think that's the report that we have on the thermometer. First and 10, Miami. Reno with lots of time. Intercepted Green Bay. Taking the ricochet off of Bruce Hardy. Tim Lewis. was wide open. Bruce Hardy. Bruce Hardy, but the ball's thrown too high. It tips, and there's the interception by Tim Lewis. Two turnovers. Fumble by Miami, interception now. Fumble by Green Bay, and now an interception by Miami. First down. And Green Bay has a first down at the 41-yard line. Miami leads 6-3. He scored a touchdown. 
Reno to Nathan, but the extra point attempt never got up. Gorn steps away, fires, pass is complete to Ivory. Five yards to the 46-yard line. Bob Brzezinski makes the tackle. It'll be second down and five. One thing that I've noticed, I saw Seattle in preseason. Jim Zorn played a lot in preseason for Seattle. The problem that he was having then was he was wild. He was all over the ballpark. What I noticed today is he's throwing with much more discipline, and he seems to be quicker, stronger, and more on target than he was in preseason with Seattle. I talked to him in the pregame warm-up, and he really is a lot more patient than quarterback. I think the reason for that is this is his second chance to start. Away. Good defensive play by William Judson. James Lofter, the intended receiver, and a little pushing and shoving going on. William Judson and James Lofton. Zorn was Christmas late. Reading. This throw was late, and Judson's sitting right on Lofton. As a matter of fact, Judson gets in excellent position. He becomes the receiver, and we have a little confrontation on the sideline. Maybe one of them owes each other some money. <laughs> Preston Denard comes in, so three wide receivers for the back. Third down. And that last play, Lofton in reality knocked the ball away. And Zorn wants a timeout. This is the second time in the first half that he has had to take a timeout at a spot when you normally wouldn't want to take one. Green Bay with one left. We'll be back in just a moment. Today's game is brought to you by Stroh's and Stro Light. Now you're talking good times and Stroh's is spoken here by the astonishingly simple new Sony Handycam. All the excitement of video movies now in the palm of your hand. And by Transamerica for insurance and financial services. The power of the pyramid is working for you. Third down. From the shotgun, an inside handoff to Jesse Clark will come up two yards short. Mac Moore of the Dolphins makes the play. And Don Bracken will come into punt for the first time in the ballgame. Tom Figueroa. And Lyle Blackwood dropping back. Figueroa will be the deep back. from the ocean, but we have a snow wave working its way around Lambeau Field. Fair catch. It is taken by Lyle Blackwood. We've got a timeout. Miami has the lead 6-3. Miami, the New York Jets, and the New England Patriots are all tied for the lead in the East with 9-4 record. We'll come back to that scoreboard for you in just a moment their own 25-yard line. Second back through is Tony Nathan. He's going to get a yard. It'll be second and nine. Carriker and Martin meet him. Now, Miami in this game leading Green Bay 6-3. The Jets leading Buffalo 7-0. And New England leading Detroit 7-3. So the three tied for the lead in the East are all leading in their ball game. And in reality, you're playing a short season, a three-game season. This game more to go, and the team of those three that wins all three, they are sure to be in the playoff as the champion of the East Four is a wild card. Miami plays New England, and the Jets have to play Chicago, so it's very important that Miami wins today. Second down and nine. Reno goes deep, double coverage is juggled incomplete. Mark Duper could have been might have been, almost was. Tom Flynn was there for the defense. He couldn't have thrown this pass any better if he handed it to him. He beat him on the line of scrimmage, beat Lewis on line of scrimmage. Now, concentrate, concentrate, don't worry about 41, but Tom Flynn does an excellent job of getting his hand in there, and he actually knocked the ball out of Duper's hand. Third down and nine. Joe Rose in as a tight end. Good receiver. Good 
Let's come in. Pass is complete. It was fumbled at the end of the play. They're going to rule it as an incomplete pass. Nat Moore was going for it. Mike Douglas of the Packers ended up with the ball, but it was an incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down, and Reggie Roby will be kicking. Here's a look. First down throw. He hits it right in the numbers, but he bobbles the ball. He never had control of the ball, and that is the third drop pass in the first half by Miami. But give some credit to Mark Lee because he really jarred it. Reggie Roby will be kicking, and Philip Epps is set for the return. Roby with a 42.7 yard average, almost gets it blocked, but he sails this when a flag is dropped. Epps at the 17 will return it to the 25, but a flag was dropped back at the 16 yard line. The Packers take the gamble, they go for the block, they do not get it, and we'll have a penalty, Miami will have the ball. Let's see what happens. Roby takes it, takes a two-step, now watch him get the ball, gets his leg up, makes contact, and here comes the Green Bay, number 37 on Green Bay. Mark Murphy. It's Mark Murphy, and he clearly hits the kicker, and it's a good call by the official. That's a rule book call because if you're going to hit the kicker, you ha you have to have touched the football. And it's a good rule because you could see in the replay, a punter is really exposed. He has absolutely no protection at all, and that's why you cannot make contact. Five-yard penalty, but carries with it an automatic first down. So bring the ball out to the 32-yard line. Penalty not that well received, of course, here at Lambeau Field. Tony Nathan. Nathan has five and maybe six yards on the play. Brian Noble, along with Mike Douglas, team up for the stop for the Green Bay Packers. Mark it at the 37-yard line. Second down and five. Don Shula, of course, he doesn't worry about the cold weather. He's all bundled up. <laughs> I'll, say, I'll tell you, the equipment man saved one pair of thermal underwear, and uh, Don Shula has it because he's uh, chairman of the board. Second and five. Nathan is stopped. He'll lose the yard. It's going to be third down and six at the 36. Brian Noble again was there for the defense. Chicago on the scoreboard with a field goal leading Indianapolis 3-0. A lot closer than anybody thought that game in Chicago. Look at this, Cincinnati continuing to roll, and they're rolling right over the Cowboys, 22 to nothing. Cincinnati, there's St. Louis ahead of New Orleans. Cincinnati's in the hunt. They have an opportunity. If Cleveland were to lose today, they would be tied for the division. Kansas City, 21, Atlanta, 7, second quarter score. a tight end, Matt Moore in as a wide receiver. Third down and six. Reno fires and the pass is complete, but it will be short of the first down. Duper pulled it in just shy of the 40, and he needed two more yards. Tom Flynn, free safety, made the play for Green Bay. Today's telecast, presented by Authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Green Bay Packers and the National Football League is prohibited. So it is fourth down and two, and Roby will do it again, and Epps is set for the return. And Roby had a great punt with excellent hang time. The last time out, let's see what he does here. Another good one. Fair catch is called for and taken at the 18-yard line. So, so on the exchange of punts, it cost, they're going to mark it the 19, it cost Green Bay six. We'll be back, and the pack has the ball. The standings in the NFC Central Division, Chicago, of course, they wrapped it up 12 and 1. Detroit is 7 and 6, but they're losing. Green Bay six and seven. Minnesota six and seven. The Green Bay situation is 
is that possibly they can make the playoffs as a wild card if they win the last three. It could be nine and seven. And the chance is there. And it does count. I was talking with Jim Zorn on the field before the ball. He said, you know, it's nice when the hands are dealt this way, when the game this late means something. And he said, I'm sorry. And all that he wanted to talk about was Lynn Dickey and how well Dickey had been playing, particularly the last two ball games. But Zorn told me, he said, the hand has been dealt to me, and I'm going to do the best that I can. Nice young man. First down, Green Bay. Second back through is Eddie Lee Ivory. Jackie Ship makes the tackle, and Ahmad Rashad is with us. And let's join him for an update. Ahmad? Warp speed, Ahmad? <laughs> that's great. That, oh, that's a great turn. That's a great turn. And the pass is complete to Jesse Clark. And Ahmad, I'm wondering if the fact that Al Toon is playing so well for the New York Jets, that that really hasn't helped Wesley Walker. I really believe so. Don't you, Sam? Oh, yes, yep. because most teams would double Wesley Walker every week, and now the emergence of Al Toon just helps it. Just like uh, Miami was struggling when they didn't have Duper, right. and now Marino's right back in the groove. Last play, moving to the Green Bay 26 yard line, so it's third down and three for the Packers. Big play. Otherwise, they'll have to kick him. I'm going to good field position. Tight end. Tight end. Waiting for a flag. It's there. It's tripping. Had to call it. Yes, Paul Kaufman. You created the coverage that he tripped. It may have been unintentional, but it was there. Called. Good call for the official. He crowded Paul Kaufman, and I think it was a good call. Yep. He's going to Paul Kaufman because he is a principal receiver when you want to pick up that key first down. Now, as he releases the ball... He's getting hit, getting rushed to the other side. Let's watch the replay. He's being crowded. He was knocked down by the linebacker, number 55 for the Miami Dolphins, Hugh Green. And it was a good call. And it's a first down for Green Bay at their own 38-yard line. And that was Jay Brophy coming in from the backside, getting to Zorn just as he released the football. Dolphins least penalized team in the National Football League for the last nine years. Ellis with the running back. First down. This is Gary Ellis. First down. 13 yards. Bud Brown chased him out. Green Bay should run the football, and if they do, they can beat the Dolphins today. They have three fine running backs who have better than a 4.4 average each carry. Why are they more successful running to the right? Because of uh, Holstrom and Greg Cook. They have two big, strong offensive linemen. And Paul Kaufman may be one of the best blocking tight ends in the league. And they're all on the right side. Miami, 49-yard line, first down. And we had some jumping in the backfield. It'll be an illegal procedure. Anytime you have movement in the in the offensive backfield, they have to be set one second before the ball can be snapped. In there addition, is 57. Rich Rich Moran. Moran. He, we call that a rolling start in track and field. He jumped the gun just a bit. But there was also movement in the backfield. So take the five-yard penalty back to the Green Bay 46-yard line. And it is first down and 15. Time Green Bay really likes to run the screen pass. Eddie Lee Ivory. 47 yard line, it'll be second down 14. Mike Charles with the tackle. Bob Brzezinski was also there. Now Jim Zorn is having, he's had to take two timeouts, and we had some jumping in the line. Is he not that comfortable yet with the Packer offense? I asked him that very question right before the game. He said he knows the offense, but he just doesn't feel that he's in sync with it because he just hasn't been here uh, very long. Came in the latter part of September. Second and 14 has time by Swift. Drills it to Paul Coffin. It'll be about three yards short of the first down. Miami 43 yard line, gain of 11, third down and three. Glenn Blackwood, the strong safety, made the tackle. 
I like Jim Zorn on this play. There's betters on the outside. It's being blocked by Cook. They do a good job, get some help from the back. But Jim Zorn re two or three times, had good presence, and found Paul Coffin. Big third down play right now. Change in that Green Bay offensive line. Ken Rutgers, the number one draft choice from USC, in his left tackle. Preston Denard is in. Three wide receivers for Green Bay. Zorn in trouble. Here comes everybody, including Hugh Green. Hugh Green came in to the backfield unblocked. Jim Zorn never had a chance. See, he's inside right now, and there it is. Rich Moran, 57, came off too late, and Green was right in the crack, and you got to be ready to block Hugh Green because he is an awesome blitzer. First sack of the ball game, and that means that Don Bracken will be kicking. And Tom Vigorito is set up for the return. Vigorito takes it and dances back to the 23 yard line. Guy Prather makes a stop for Green Bay and a flag down back at the 45 yard line. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. WNUK 11, Green Bay. This is Charlie Jones, Sam Retigliano, and that's Tom Dooley, the referee. The score, Miami 6, Green Bay 3. We have 5 minutes and 24 seconds. Time remaining, first half. We lost our communications with the referee, but what happened the penalty against the Green Bay Packers? And it is refused. Miami has the ball at their own 23-yard line, and Indianapolis now with a field goal. They have tied Chicago in the second quarter, 3-3. Miami 6, Green Bay 3. Fumble on the snap. Green Bay has the ball. Green Bay is going to come up with this ball. right now he never got the snap what Dan Marino did was he took his hands out too early and Dwight Stevenson was moving to his right and there you see everybody watch the ball squirt out at the end it's gonna squirt there it is I found it and Green Bay has the ball inside the 20 and Miami has made a lot of mistakes fumbles drop passes and interceptions in the first half Green Bay has a chance now to tie the game or go ahead 17-yard line, first down. Ford fumbles the step. Miami's going to take this football. Miami's got it back. Jack E. Schiff recovers this fumble. You did it, Dan Marino, and I can do it too. And there's the fumble right there. He just never made the snap. It's kicked around, and there's a lot of white jerseys. You see the defense can see the ball. The offensive linemen are not aware of the fumble, and Miami takes the ball back. Miami first down at their own 19-yard line. Five minutes and eight seconds left to go in the first half. That's going to be a big play as this game goes on. Both they had a them. chance to tie it and had a chance to go ahead. makes the tackle at the 28-yard line. So it'll be second down, a yard, maybe two yards to go. Let's see where they spot the ball. They mark it at the 27-yard line, so it's second down and two.
coming back for it. Oh, it, it was Mark a good was, catch. It well, was a good you, catch. Really? I thought that he trapped it. He went to his knees, he brought his elbows in tight, and then he scooped the ball. Well, I was waiting on the official's call because I, I thought I saw a little bounce off of the green grass. First down. Seven yard line. Green right side, Tony Nathan. And Nathan just keeps plowing. Can well pick up the first down, carrying John Anderson and Randy Scott with him. Did not get out of bounds. And they're marking it right at the marker of this side. It is a first down. They are overplaying Duper and Clayton, and I would think there's Paul Kaufman on the sideline sitting on the bench. Looks like he has uh, contact, contact lenses yeah. is, is out. But I think Miami should screen a great deal because Green Bay is overplaying both outside receivers. Randy Scott, the closest man for the defense. Now Nathan, is, he has scuba gloves on, and those are those are probably the best gloves to catch the ball in this kind it of. Came weather. into play about three or four years ago. There's a play action pass. So yeah, Marino's looking for people right now, and he finds Clay. He finds uh, Nathan wide open. That's Nathan's second drop, and that could have been another first down for Miami. Don Johnson, the tight end for the Miami Dolphins. Second and ten at the 47. Showing clips. Defense drops out of it. You know, rolling left, but Clint goes deep. And overthrows everybody. Mike Clayton, the attendant receiver, really says, my fault. You know, there was good coverage. I was just throwing it deep. Don't worry about it. It'll be third down and ten. It was a design rollout play. Is Clayton right now. He needs to take time because Marino, see, he stops and he goes upfield. And the reason that he did that is because Marino was rolling out. And Marino, had he stopped to throw the football, Clayton had Lewis clearly beat for a touchdown. Matt Moore is in for Miami as a third wide receiver. And Joe Rose is the receiving tight end. Third and ten, shotgun. The blast, he gets it up, and there's the road. 20 yard line, and Marino was decked. They doubled both outside receivers. 59 John Anderson was covering Joe Rose on the top of your screen. Watch Joe Rose. He's got a linebacker all the way. Everybody's got their attention to the outside receiver. What a throw! What a perfect throw. Anderson co Anderson's coverage was not that bad. It was just an excellent throw. And what they did is they took advantage of the receiver being doubled to the outside and got Joe Rose on the linebacker. A gain of 32 yards on the play to the Green Bay 21-yard line. We're moving on the two-minute mark. That's the reason the players are just standing around. They know we're going to get there. We've arrived. Two minutes. We'll take a timeout. It's Miami 6. Green Bay 3, time remaining, first down. Miami with a first down at the Green Bay 21-yard line. Dolphins leading by 3, 6-3. Six, Nino fires, it's there! Clayton, touchdown! What a play by Clayton. And what a throw by Marino. He could have thrown that ball right through a pipe. There were all kinds of green jerseys all over the place. Hit him on a slant play. Watch Marino, three-step drop. One, two, three. Now watch. Boom! Right in there. Good coverage. Now watch Clayton. Watch the athlete he is. Reaches out. Ball goes beyond the plane. Touchdown. Outstanding play by Clayton and Marino. And they've been doing that all year long. 21-yard touchdown pass. The extra point is if this one is up and it is good. And the score is Miami 13 and Green Bay 3. So the Dolphins now lead by 10 with 155 
left to go in the first half. And for Mark Clayton, that is his fourth touchdown reception. And for Dan Marino, that is his 24th touchdown pass. You saw the release. It's a jackhammer release. Now watch Marino now. Whoops, looks to the left. Did he catch it? He caught it. He's going to go in the end zone for a touchdown. And that makes the quarterback feel very good. And what Clayton did was just outstanding, gifted athletic ability to get that ball in the end zone. And just a few minutes ago, Green Bay had the ball inside the 20 with the score 6-3 to three when uh, Zorn fumbled the snap. Let's go back to the touchdown and look to see what Mark Clayton does after he catches the ball. Watch him catch the ball now. He splits the two defenders. Now watch him reach the ball right to the end zone. That is a fantastic feat of athletic ability. Quad Reves kicking off, and here is Epson the return from the one-yard line. And this time returns to the 24, so he has 23 yards on this return. He had one in the 30s earlier. And Joe Rose makes the tackle, and Green Bay goes to work with a minute 45 left to go in the first half. Games remaining, Detroit, and then on the road at Tampa Bay. And uh, Detroit does not win on the road. They win only at home this year, it seems. And they're losing 17-3 to to New England. At New England. And so the Packers have an excellent opportunity right. to stay, uh, stay alive in the race and could get to the playoffs. But they need to come back here. They trail 13 to three, only one timeout remaining in the first half. And here's Zorn. Three, three. Nobody was there, you won for it. <laughs> 32 yard line. Gain of eight, second down and two. That stops the clock with a minute 37 to go. I didn't see, had Miami filtered the screen or had the receiver fallen down? What happens in a situation like that, some linebacker read it and grabbed the screening back. Zorn had presence, ran out of bounds. I look right now for Lofton or Epps to be involved in a big play for them to get the scoring position. Let me make a correction. Let me make a correction. We've just been informed that Green Bay is at Detroit. Both of the remaining games are on the road at Detroit. Detroit has a perfect record at home. So that's a tough one for Green Bay. Four man run. It's there and it's caught. And then it is intercepted or picked off and no, oh, they're gonna are they gonna, gonna call it incomplete. Good lands what happened. Looks that as if Lofton had it. He had the ball, but he fumbled it. And had he fumbled it, of course, Miami would have recovered. Excellent throw. Now watch Lofton. Working upfield right now. He's going to come back in at 90 degrees. He's got plenty of room. Judson falls down. Now he's got the ball. Now watch the ball being bobbled like back and yeah. forth. And uh, they call it incomplete because he never had complete control. They had the ball beyond the 50-yard line. Third down and two. 130 time remaining first half. Epps in motion. Dorn rolling right. He's a left-hander. He throws it and passes complete. Out of bounds, stopping the clock. Good play. But Brown for the defense. Tough pass for Zorn. Flag dropped to the 44-yard line. He's left-handed and he's rolling to his right. It's against Green Bay. They'll bring it back. He fakes the clock. Now watch him come to the outside. 91. Mac Moore is chasing him. And this is tough for a left-hander to turn this way and get the ball to West. Now West puts a few more yards on it, but we have a penalty and the play is going to be brought back. Inedgeable man downfield. A lip reader. See, that's what it is. See if you can figure that out. It'll be third down. That goes over. Let's check the scoreboard. Greg Cook apparently uh, was the ineligible. Okay. Colts and the, and the Bears are tied 3-3. Detroit trails New England. Pass lead. Philadelphia 2, Washington. I think it sounds like the second inning. Jets leading Buffalo. 21 to nothing. Dallas still trails. Look at that. Whew. Big upset working. St. Louis out in front of New Orleans. Kansas City leading Atlanta. And at halftime, NFL 85. They'll update all of the scores and have the highlights from around the AFC. Almost intercepted. Ivory, the intended receiver, Alex Moyer, the rookie from Northwestern, half a step away from a touchdown. He was more 
concerned about knocking the ball down than catching it. See, Zorn throws the ball late. Now watch Moyer now. Go in in front and catch the ball. Don't knock it down. He had a chance to become famous because if he'd have gotten that one, they would have been in for a touchdown. Don Bracken will be kicking. Tom Vigorito is in for the return. And Miami could have excellent field position with three timeouts remaining and a minute 18 left in the second quarter. Plenty of time. Here's pressure. Good catch. Taken at the 47-yard line and dropped in his tracks. And so Miami will have an opportunity. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't forget at halftime, NFL 85. All the scores and highlights. And Miami with an opportunity to add another highlight to their first half. Over the middle, the pass is complete. Tony Nathan. Nathan has the first down at the Green Bay 43-yard line. Mike Douglas making the tackle just a moment ago. At the end of that punt, Don Bracken with the punt. Vigorito with the return. We'll try and get that in because Tom Flynn and Ken Stills an excellent coverage for Green Bay. Reno throws. Complete to Tony Nathan. 37-yard line. And now Miami will take a timeout. Now, let's go. Here's what happened. Figueroa should have called a fair catch. And Stills makes an outstanding yeah. play. That's really a good play. We have a penalty, and it looks like it's going to be against Green Bay. Marino called the timeout. There's 45 seconds left to go. They have two timeouts left. And we did not have a penalty in the first quarter. And... Uh, Green Bay has run into some problems. They really have. And NBC, here's a program. No, let's get the call here for the referee, Tom Dooley. Offside. First down. All right. We'll kick off the College Bowl lineup on NBC Sports with the Florida Citrus Bowl. This year's contest featuring Robbie Bosco and the BYU Cougars. They'll take on the Ohio State Buckeyes live from Orlando, Florida. Join us for all the action plus a special halftime extravaganza. On Saturday, December the 28th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on NBC Sports, it will be hosted by our good friend Jay Randolph. Look for Nat Moore, 89, and Joe Rose, the two inside receivers. First and five. Reno fires. The pass is complete at the 25-yard line. And again, it is Mark Clayton, a 13-yard reception, first down. Flynn and Lewis are there for the defense. And a two-minute offense underway. Marino is in control. This one is complete to Joe Rose. Got to call a timeout. 16-yard line. And Miami will take the timeout here. Something that Marino can do is he will drop down. When he has inside pressure on the right side, he will drop down and throw almost sidearm. Sometimes it gets him in trouble because it can be blocked or deflected the line of scrimmage. He has a survival intelligence. He can actually feel the pressure of receivers. Joe Rose should have gone out of bounds. That's Don Strzok to Marino's left, who's talking to Marino right now with Coach Shula. He has been a tremendous help to Marino. You can see Strzok is actually talking to him right now. And what they're talking about is the fact that they have one timeout. They're going to need that for the field goal. There's 13 seconds left to go. So Marino right now has to throw the ball into the end zone. If it's complete in the field of play, they'll have to use their last timeout to line up and kick the field goal. And they have a first down. First down. At the 16-yard line. I would look now, since they're overplaying Duper and Clayton, they've had Joe Rose and... Nat Moore as inside receivers. I would look for him to look for Rose or Nat Moore inside, and if it's not clearly open, he'll throw the ball in some blonde's lap in the mezzanine so they can kick the field goal. And you had a look at Wad Reves there. Forrest Gregg, head coach of the Green Bay Packers. And the thoughts of the thoughts all over the sidelines, and they're all different thoughts. How do I stop him? Am I going to stop him? Who do I throw to? And uh, I would rather be kicking the extra point than a field goal attempt. So there's a maximum number of thoughts stirring around Lambeau Field with 13 seconds to go in the first half. Green Bay is frustrated. Miami has fumbled, thrown interceptions, and dropped four passes 
and yet they're ahead 13 to 3. And trying to stretch that margin. First down at the 16 with 13 seconds left to go. First down. Reno almost intercepted. John Anderson had his hands on it. Couldn't pull it in. Matt Moore, the intended receiver. Ever so close. They had Matt Moore and Joe Rose on the same side. Reno right now is cocked. He tries to throw the football through the coverage. John Anderson dropped the interception. It was intended for Joe Rose, and that may cost them three points. You Good have cost. to make those plays. Excellent coverage. Could cost seven because now with nine seconds and still the timeout remaining. Miami is going after the touchdown one more time. They're going to have to get it up fast. They're going to have to get the ball up fast. There it is. Touchdown. Matt Moore. Marino with his third touchdown pass of the game. 25 on the year. The reason for that, it's tough on Green Bay. They have to double to the outside. He's got a one-on-one -on -one right now, but watch it. He's clearly open. Look at the throw. The throw is perfect. The defender should have stayed with Nat Moore into the end zone. As soon as Marino saw that opening, he got it to Nat Moore. With four seconds to go in the first half, and the extra point is good, and Miami now has stretched it out, leading Green Bay 20-3. to three. And Juan Reves I guess he'd rather kick the extra point than the field goal, because that's what he did. And Miami moving 54 yards in six plays. Marino showed, obviously, championship presence in that drive. All the timeouts, when he needed them, he found the open receivers. He didn't force the ball, except the interception to John Anderson. He should have intercepted. Actually, it cost him seven points. And a strong arm sometimes, Charlie, can be a mixed blessing because you think you can throw it through a brick wall or a maze of linebackers. And Green Bay has not played that that poorly at all. I mean, the, the, you feel like the score should be closer than 20 to 3. They've had some opportunities. They had the opportunity you pointed out inside the 20-yard line. They fumbled it back away. Well, they had an opportunity on this drive. There we go right there. Man is obviously, producer, Peter Rolf. Man, man obviously is very simple. <laughs> they had an opportunity to stop that touchdown. John Anderson was in perfect yep. position in the yep. coverage, and he should have yep. made the play. And Juan Revesge will be kicking off. Gary Ellis on the return to the 20. 25, he goes spinning out of bounds. As time runs out in the first half, Jim Jensen, old Crash himself, was there. Wide receiver, special team specialist. And Green Bay will be receiving the opening kickoff. Gary Ellison dropping back. And that should be Philip Epps dropping back with him. Brown of the Miami Dolphins had a pinched nerve earlier in the game and then we have a report that he has a sprained ankle and now will not return. So Jackie Ship will be going for Mike Brown as the right inside linebacker for the Dolphins. And Juan Reves will be kicking off for Miami as we open the action in the second half. The temperature still in the upper 20s. Epps takes it at the four-yard line. Good return to the 34-yard line. 30 yards on the return by Philip Epps. Alex Moyer of the Dolphins, along with George Little, make the tackle. So Green Bay will go to work with Jim Zorn at quarterback. We'll see Eddie Lee Ivory and Jesse Clark as the running backs. We also see Gary Ellis. Those are the three primary running backs, Epps and Lofton, the men outside, all Kaufman, the tight end. They need a big play. They need a big play to get back in this football game. Jesse Clark gets the call, three yards to the 37. 
for a second down and seven as Mike Charles makes the tackle. And Gary Ellis will check into that offensive set, and Eddie Lee Ivory will come out. Carl Swanke is back in at left tackle. Rich Moran, Mark Cannon, Ron Halstrom, and Greg Cook, the offensive line. Second and seven. Here's Ellis. First down. 45-yard line. Gain of eight. First down. Jackie Ship with the tackle. On the sweep, the first most important person is the first guard out. And there he is, 65, Ron Holcomb. Let's watch him win. Buries the corner. <laughs> William Judson and 31 sees the hole, goes up for a key first down. Green Bay, 45-yard line, so the backers come out running. Last week in the snowstorm here against Tampa Bay, Eddie Lee Ivory rushed for 109 yards. Ellis rushed for 101 yards. Join with a screen. It's there to Ivory. Near the 50-yard line, Bob Brudzinski. Makes the stop, a gain of five, second down and five. Now let's do a quick check of the scoreboard. Third quarter, New England 17, Detroit 3. St. Louis 21, New Orleans 6, third quarter scores. And here it is Miami 20 and Green Bay 3 with 13 minutes and 41 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Zorn sets up, throws passes, and leaps it in. That was the sideline, pushed out of bounds. Paul Langford may have saved a touchdown, because if Epps could straighten up down the sideline, he could fly. Jackie Shep hitting Zorn just as he made his release. Epps comes in motion, makes the coverage more difficult for Langford. He gets the ball off, and watch Epps now. See the separation between himself and Langford, 44, as he pushes him out of bounds. And had he not done that, Epps would have been gone. Very important, Charlie, that Green Bay scores on this drive. 15 yards to the Miami 35. 15. Eddie Lee Ivory. Hey. I was looking for flood. The quarterback, you could think, was in motion, but he was going away from the line of scrimmage. I thought there was all kinds of movement. Doug Betters makes the stop at the 32-yard line. Gain of three, second down and seven. Double tight end, Paul Kaufman and Ed West for three plays. Second and seven. Epps in motion. Here's Clark, outside and written down at the 29-yard line. So a tough three yards. It'll be third down and four. Jackie Ship and Paul Langford make the tackle. Clark, eight carries, 32 yards. The line of scrimmage, the Miami 29-yard line. Three wide receivers come in for Green Bay. It's interesting, Charlie. They replaced the offensive center in the shotgun. Blake Moore snaps to the shotgun. Mark Cannon comes out of the game. Preston Denard is the third wide receiver. Five in the secondary. Driving reception. Did he get it? Touchdown! Touchdown. Preston Denard! Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho! And Green Bay is back in the game. And there's the big play. They're in a shotgun formation. He's trying to find someone outside. Epps a Lofton, but now he finds Denard right in the middle. Now watch Denard. He's being covered by 44 Langford. You can't see it, but he makes an outstanding catch because most receivers on ground impact would have coughed that football up, and that is a big play because Green Bay is back in the game. Al Del Greco with the extra point. It is good. Miami 20 and Green Bay 10 will be back with the kickoff in just a moment. 
Today's game is brought to you by RCA, creators of video technology that excites the senses. By McDonald's, it's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. And by Hayes Microcomputer Products, say yes to the future with Hayes. Miami's lead has been cut to 10, 20 to 10, and now Del Greco kicking off. The 15 yard line. This is Joe Carter on the return. And Carter returns to about the 33 yard line where Tim Lewis makes the tackle. And Guy Prather was also there. Now, the man who caught the touchdown pass was number 88, Preston Denard. You thought he would be celebrating on the sideline. Well, he wasn't. He was on the far side of the kickoff team. Well, how many times do you see the receiver catch the touchdown pass? And then come right back and be on the special team. Well, we just saw it with Preston Denard. That happens when you have the title back up before you name a number. And Offens he's happy to be here. Offensively, Dan Marino at quarterback. And Miami moves on offense for the first time in the second half from their own 33-yard line. But he better. Bennett to the 44-yard line, 11 yards and the first down. Mark Murphy and Tom Flynn make the tackle. Let's check the scoreboard in the AFC East. Miami here leading 20 to 10. The New York Jets leading Buffalo 21 to nothing. And New England leading Detroit 17 to 3. So all three teams tied for the lead in the East coming into today's action with nine and four records, all leading in their ballgame. down Miami. Far side, pass is complete. Dan Johnson, the foot he got a little slippery at the 49-yard line. So it'll be second down and six. Mark Murphy and Mike Douglas were there for the Green Bay Packers. Tony Nathan and Woody Bennett in the backfield. Bruce Hardy, Dan Johnson, Joe Rose, the three tight ends, and you'll see them in one, two, and three combinations. Mark Clayton and Mark Duper, the wide receivers, with Geisler, Foster, Stevenson, Clark, and Ronnie Lee, that offensive line. And John Geisler, with that bump knee, started at left tackle, and he's still there. Got a blitz. Pass is complete as Marino reads the blitz. Nathan pulls it in, and he's pulled down by Tom Flynn at the Green Bay 49. Gain of a couple. Tom Flynn. Was co had coverage on Tony Nathan. But watch Marino right now. Looking to his right. Now he sees the blitz now. And watch him get rid of the football before the linebacker can even come close. And Tom Flynn makes a tackle on Tony Nathan. And that's what he did all night on Monday against Chicago. You just cannot blitz him. He has great presence back there. He has what we call survival intelligence. He feels the pressure. Third down and four. Moore is in, and Joe Rose is in. Pass is complete. Flag is down. If the play holds up, it'll be a first down at the 44. Matt Moore with the reception, but where the flag was dropped, that's usually an offensive holding call. And that's what it'll be. Is that Miami's first penalty? We're checking with our crack backup crew. Second penalty. It was close. I only missed by one. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Miami coming into this game only had 62 penalties, and you pointed out earlier they've had the least amount of penalties in the last nine years of any team in the National Football League. Third down and 14. The ball back at the Miami 41 yard line, and Marino will operate from the shotgun. Got to go to the middle of the offense. Joe Rose. One that more. And Marino was throwing the ball away. He was running out of time. Duper, the intended receiver. Tim Lewis had excellent coverage on him and the ovation for the Packers defense. will be kicking and Philip Epps is set for the return takes it at the 20 needs a block 
does not get the block, but still gets 20 yards on the return. Alex Moyer makes a tackle for the Miami Dolphins. We've got a timeout. Miami has the lead. He's just across the parking lot from, lot from Lambeau Field is the Packer Hall of Fame. And if you notice, in the mobile home, they're watching on television. He was closing the door. Hi, guys. How are you? <laughs> so you drive to the parking lot to watch it on television. I love it. Green Bay, trailing by 10. First down, their own 30-yard line. Ellis in motion. Zorn sets up deep. Far side coverage, almost intercepted. Lofton, the intended receiver, and Paul Lankford was diving for it. It'll be second and 10, back of the 30. This is the second time in the second half that Green Bay has had the ball in offense. The first time, they moved 76 yards in seven plays. Zorn to Denard with a 29-yard touchdown pass to put them back in the ball game. Then they stop Miami, or Miami stopped themselves with that penalty. And now Green Bay has an opportunity to be right amongst them. Zorn fires this with a loft and good pass, first down. Langford with the tackle. I'm impressed the way Zorn's firing the ball. He's throwing the ball with authority. He's waiting now for the play to come in from the sideline. But we talked about this early on. He's very, very patient. Watch him take three-step drop. He's watching for Lofton to clear. Now he drills the ball to Lofton right between the eight and the zero. And one of those plays, if Lofton gets it in second gear, could be a big play. Very important now for Green Bay. Take this ball down. Second drive in the second half. Two more points on the board. Little play action fake. Go big. He's there. Lofton. My choices were 18 and 19. He said, not really a big selection. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. WNUK 11, Green Bay. Miami. First down, 42-yard line. Pass is complete to Woody Bennett. Bennett to the 45. Eight of three, second and seven. Mark Murphy with the tackle. Let's go back to that touchdown pass. You look for this all day long. Play action pass. Where's the one-on-one -on -one to James Lofton? Now, what Zorn does is he lays the ball up nice and high. Lofton has got him beat. Lankford beat. And he ran right underneath it. And now the score is 20-17 to 17, Miami. Second down and seven. Miami at their own 45. Dropped over the middle to Tony Nathan. And Nathan has the first down at the Green Bay 44-yard line. Mark Lee, Randy Scott make the tackle. For an update, here's Ahmad Rashad. 
And Ahmad, I'm sure that you're as surprised as we are that that game is simply as close as it is. I wonder if the Bears are still reeling from what happened to them in the game last Monday night against Miami. The pass is complete to Mark Duper. Duper steps out of bounds at the Green Bay 32-yard line. That'll go for 12. And another first down as Mark Lee was the man guarding him in the secondary of the Packers. They're going to mark it at the 33-yard line. Still a first down. So Green Bay in their only two offensive thrusts in the second half managing to score. Miami stopped by a penalty the first time they had the ball in the second half. And this is the second time. Then Miami has had the ball in the second half. And here's Tony Nathan jumping to the outside. And picked up at the last minute by John Anderson, number 59, who just reached out of the pile and put a hand on his ankle and brought him down at the 29-yard line. Still, he got four. It'll be second down and six. Bay 17, six minutes and ten seconds left to go in the third. And Marino has the Dolphins on the move. And Johnson is now the tight end. The pass is low, but it is caught by Tony Nathan. Mike Douglas and Tim Lewis make the tackle at the 21-yard line. Should be a first down. So Green Bay again with the outside coverage and Nathan is open in the middle. Nathan, seven receptions and 54 yards and a touchdown. And we'll add that last play. So add eight more yards to his total. And here's Nathan. Second and 11 as Mark Murphy makes the tackle. Sometimes you wonder, Sam, if Miami should even bother with trying to run the football. They throw it so well. I think they do that because Marino gets tired. Watch character <laughs> right now on running league. He's being blocked to the inside. Roy Foster, 61, is turning up in the hole on Mark Murphy, but a host of Green Bay linebackers led by number 55, Randy Scott, make the play. Now we have a convention. I didn't see the flag, apparently, it was there is Tom Dooley. The, uh, the mic is frozen, as you probably noticed, and they need to move the clock down. That's what he's talking to. We're trying to, like you at home, trying to read lips, and so they're just adjusting the time on the clock. being told what is going on with the reset of the clock. And so a pause in the afternoon's activities. And a time for us to remind you that coming up next on NBC Sports, second half of the doubleheader, most of you will see the battle for sole possession of first place in the AFC West between the Los Angeles Raiders and the Denver Broncos. Dick Enberg and Merlin Olsen are right now at Mile High Stadium, preparing for that ball game. We have also some regional action as your team plays here. So kick off the second half of our doubleheader with NBC Sports. It will be second down and 11 with the ball at the 22-yard line. That's Donnie Humphrey who has talked with one of the officials. And the wave has started once again in Lambeau Field. an orange wave because of all the hunters that come to the ball games here. And uh, might be a little reminiscent of what you'll be seeing in the second half of the doubleheader, Mile High Stadium. It will be cold there. And the orange crush taking on the black jersey Raiders. Should be a great ball game. Five and a half minutes is the time remaining. The clock is now moving. And so are the Miami Dolphins. Trailing Green Bay trailing by three. Miami 20, Green Bay 17. Marino loses.
loses his footing, and the pass is just a little behind Dan Johnson. Mike Douglas for the defense, but when Reno planted that right foot to throw, it just was sliding out from under him. Third down. Marino drops back. Now watch him feel the pressure from the outside. Now step up in the pocket. So he steps up in the pocket, but he loses his footing. And again, Johnson is being covered by a linebacker. Throw was thrown just a little behind him. Now we have a third down and 10. Important play for Green Bay to stop Miami here. Watch out for Nat Moore, number 89. Green Bay offsides. Pass incomplete. Character jump. He's going to say he was pulled, but I think he just jumped. On Miami. Ronnie Lee, right in front of Carricker, moved, and that pulled Carricker offside, and it looks like it's going to go against Miami. Now, big decision. Do you make it fourth down? Their infield goal range would be a 40 yard attempt, or do you take the penalty and give Miami another shot? Fourth down. They're refusing the penalty. They don't want Marino to have another pop at him right now. That's right. A field goal gives Green Bay an opportunity to score a touchdown, kick an extra point, and go ahead. And remember, a blocked extra point in the first half by Green Bay. Moves big right now. Juan Ramez struck the home 30-yard line in a tip of 40 yards. Ramez is hit from 47 yards out. The it's not that good. Look, Strzok wants a timeout. Something is going on. Does he want to change the football? He's pointing at something. The Strzok was very, he's the holder, very insistent. He's, he's going to be charged with a timeout. Strzok is trying to convince the referee, Tom Dooley, that he shouldn't be charged with a timeout. And I, I believe they want a football change. It's, where the, it's either the football change or where the football is located. Strzok saw that, but right now they're going to charge that timeout against Miami, and you know you only have three and a half, and you're very, very valuable. Now they're not changing the football, so that's not what he was pointing to. But there was something that he could see, and you say, did he make the right decision? I think that he made the right decision. Because you're going for three points. You're going for points. At that point, the snapper and the holder are the two single most important elements of the field goal. And if the holder is not comfortable, he has the right to talk to the official. But he got charged for the timeout. Now this is what this is what happened. Look. They're struck now talking to the official, pointing to some problem over the ball with Stevenson. Now he says timeout. He called a timeout. He called a timeout, and that's why the official charged Miami with that timeout. That Ravaz right now, that delay takes away from his concentration. And that's why it's important now as the kicker, you see him looking down. He doesn't want to have anything to do with anything else involved in this game right now except to concentrate on the kick. but Strzok gets it down. But watch the trajectory. The trajectory is low, but there's somebody coming in right from the middle, and that's where he gets his hand on it. I really believe that the ball was blocked, kicked too low. Motion. Number 94, Charles Martin, the nose tackle. Free agent a year ago out of Livingston is the man who blocked the field goal attempt. And Green Bay has the ball at their own 32. 
first down, trailing by three with five minutes to go in the third. makes the tackle we have a report from the field that Don Strzok did not like the position that the ball was set for the center snap maybe there was mud or that he was afraid of a bad snap and he wanted the officials to move the ball to a different spot what he should have done was not signal for the timeout second down about half a yard to go for the first down here's Zorn Three pass First down. Miami 41 yard line. Seventeen yards. Langford and Brown on the stop. Two outstanding blocks by Rich Moran and Ron Hallstrom. He lays the ball off to Gary Ellis. Watch the two blocks. 65. Knocks him outside. And Moran knocks the man inside. And that springs. Gary Ellis to 17 yards. Outstanding play by the two offensive guards. First down, Green Bay. Flag is down, pass is incomplete. Two flags on the play. And right now, the Green Bay Packers are hot. Two drives in the second half, both the touchdowns, and now they're on another drive in Miami territory. There's Lynn Dickey with the neck brace in the booth. He was eating potato salad before, and maybe now he's full. <laughs> and they've got sides in the booth. Oh, can you believe that? I love it. There it is. Thank you. Oh, they got oh. Then <laughs> That's dynamite. They've got television over there too. Wave the side up and down. Watch it. Wave the side up and down. Ivory to the 38 yard, 39 yard, and he has three. Glenn Blackwood with the tackle. Now, we have a report that Don Strzok was complaining to the officials that the ball placed for the center snap was placed illegally outside of the hash marks or outside of the white stripe. And that's what he was complaining about. That's the report that we have. Five in the secondary for Miami. Third down and seven. Gord, it's complete. First down. Preston Denard again. Shotgun. Now watch him drill this ball. This ball is really thrown well. 44 Lankford actually was off balance. He was in front of the ball, could have made the interception. Denard now has scored a touchdown and a key third down reception. First down, Miami 26. Clark in motion. Here's Ivory. He's going to get a yard. They may give him two. Let's see where they mark it. We'll call it the 25. It'll be second and nine. Kim Bocamper was there. Two and a half minutes left to go in the third. Miami leading by three, and Green Bay is on the move. Let's check the scoreboard. Chicago out in front of Indianapolis by seven. And we'll come back to those. New England still leads Detroit. Intended receiver. Jackie Ship knocked it down. It'll be third down. Let's check the scoreboard again. Philadelphia leading Washington in the third. Jets shutting out Buffalo in the third. Dallas has some points, but look at this. Cincinnati by 33. St. Louis in front of New Orleans. Kansas City still leads Atlanta. 
Here it's third down and nine. 25-yard line of Miami. Green Bay from the shotgun. He's coming with a blitz. In the corner is there. No, he cannot get to it. James Lofton, the intended receiver. In the second half, in the second half, Jim Zorn has completed seven of 11 for 149 yards and two touchdowns. Jim Zorn is the holder, and he used to do an excellent job of fake field goals when he was with the Seattle Seahawks. 42-yard field goal attempt by Al Del Greco, or, as Sam Bertigliano says, is it a fake? Now, they're going to kick this one. They need to be there. For the tie, it is low, and it is no good. Del Greco misses from 42 yards away. He hit earlier from 23. And that means that Miami will take over at the line of scrimmage, which was the 25-yard line. Miami leads by three, 20 to 17, with a minute 57 left in the third quarter. The second half, third quarter, completely dominated by the Green Bay Packers. Right. Miami's two drives, however, were very good and they were stopped by two Miami penalties. So here come the Dolphins with their own 25, leading by three. Marino's pass is incomplete. He overthrows Tony Nathan, and Tom Flynn was diving for a possible interception but couldn't get there. So bring it back to the 25. It'll be second down and 10. Let's check the scoreboard. In the AFC East, starting today, three teams tied for the lead with 9-4 records. Miami, New York Jets, New England Patriots, we'll get to that in a moment. Second and 10, back at the 25. Flag down, inside handoff. And Tony Nathan goes to the 30-yard line, but there was a marker on the play as they check that out. We had a scoring change on our scoreboard, and now we'll bring it to you. It's against Philly, it's against Miami. Miami here leading by three, Jets leading by 14, and New England is leading by 14 also. So the three teams tied for the lead in the East all right now in the third quarter with Detroit New England in the fourth quarter leading in their game. So Miami self-destructing with penalties. Here's another one uncharacteristic of Miami to be involved in negative plays. Second down and 15. And Sam, as you know, it's not the penalties, but when they come, and they have come in important parts of the drive. Both drives in the second half have hurt Miami because of penalties. Here's Nathan. Nathan to the 27-yard line. A flag dropped on the play. And it is against Miami drop back at the 10 yard line and what is hurting now is they're losing good field position and if they have to punt Green Bay is going to have to good have good field position and could kick a field goal to tie this game as Strzok and Shula huddle on the sideline holding against the Dolphins so we'll bring the ball back to the 10 yard line it'll be second down at 25 One minute and 22 seconds left in the third, and there's an update on the penalty as Dan Johnson checks in at tight end for Miami. Reno rolls, throws the pass is complete on the far side to Mark Clayton. And Clayton bumped out of bounds, and a flag dropped upfield at the 28-yard line. And that usually is illegal chuck, and it could be a first down for Miami. Second and 25 for Miami. The play went to the 18-yard line, so they would have a gain of eight unless Green Bay, with the miscue, five-yard penalty, I takes see. the ball to the 15, and you're right, will carry the first down. 
break for Miami. They have a first down at their own 15-yard line. That's a defensive coordinator on top of your screen, Dick Mojaleski, that was so upset. That, of course, is Don Shula. So Miami with a reprieve, 102 left to go in the third. The Dolphins lead by three. Bruce Hardy back in at tight end. Inside handoff as Tony Nathan goes to the 20-yard line. He'll mark it the 21. So he has six, and it'll be second down and four. Mark Murphy making the tackle. You hear a lot about Walter Payton and uh, Marcus Allen, but Tony Nathan is a multi-purpose back. Came into the game with 54 catches and is a leading rusher. Second down and four. Woody Bennett cut down at the line of scrimmage by Brian Noble, the rookie from Arizona State. It'll be third down. And with that play, time will run out in the third quarter. So we come to the end of the third with the score, Miami 20, Green Bay 17. And we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Do you have a feeling that they missed the bus? That's right. I think they're that in the wrong spot. They think they're in Miami. That's it. Right. We're number one, and you're number two. Yeah. <laughs> Third down and four as we start the fourth quarter. Miami at their own 21-yard line. Intended receiver. It'll be fourth down, and Reggie Roby will be kicking. Statistically, after three, go right down to the total yards. That says it all. Dolphins 273, Packers 287. The margin is three points, and that's as close as the numbers are going to get. Be careful here with Epps. Be careful here with Epps. Ooh. He gambled with the reception, but excellent coverage. By the Miami Dolphins, Alex Moyer was downfield. We've got a timeout. Green Bay has the ball when we come back. Today's game is brought to you by Michelob Light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Who says you can't have it all? By Radio Shack, your Christmas electronics store. And by Midas, for mufflers, brakes, and shocks. Trust the Midas touch. This is Charlie Jones, Sam Ritigliano. 14 minutes, 49 seconds left to go. Lambeau Field, Green Bay, Wisconsin. The Packers with the ball, trailing by three. From the Green Bay 38-yard line. And Jesse Clark is stacked up. He'll lose a yard. As he is met by Mike Charles and Hugh Green. Go to the scoreboard. Chicago 17, Indianapolis 3, fourth quarter. Philadelphia now by two over Washington. Jets comfortably in front of Buffalo on the four. Dallas comfortably behind Cincinnati. Woo, 43 to 10. 28-9. St. Louis leading New Orleans. 38-10. Kansas City out in front of Atlanta. And here it is. Miami 20. Green Bay 17. The pack with two tight ends. Play action. Jordan's pass. There. Drop. Epps incomplete. Lankford with the coverage. So it'll be third down. Three wide receivers for Green Bay. And in this situation, the key has been Preston Denard, number 88. Jorn has gone to him twice. First down, Philip Epps. Jim Zorn has 
He's got a lot of zip on the ball. They've gone to the pass in the second half, and they're in this football game. Now watch him find Epps, step up, zip it to the outside. Epps stays in bounds. No way Don McNeil can make the play. Big first down at midfield. First down at the 49-yard line. Gary Ellis. Ellis has three yards to the Miami 48. So it is second down and seven. Mike Charles with the tackle. Mike Charles has been resurrected in this defense. Watch him on Mike Cannon. Keeps his feet clean. Keeps his fleet keen. Keeping the blocker away from him. Now watch him come off and make the play. He has really helped this defense with his play at nose tackle after Bob Bumhauer, a Pro Bowl nose tackle, was hurt. Second down and seven. Epps in motion. And we have flags. And the pass is incomplete. It is against Miami. Don Shula should be frustrated. Penalties against Miami offensively and defensively had hurt this team the entire second half. It gives Green Bay an opportunity right now with two downs to pick up one yard for a first down. The ball just outside the 42-yard line of Miami. First down. Ellis to the 22. with the tackle, 20 yards on the play. Need a yard, goes straight at him. Watch Holstrom, right there, block J. Brophy, 53. And that clears the lane for Gary Ellis, 31. And now Green Bay is in field goal position, opportunity to tie the game, touchdown to go ahead. Second down and two, Judson with the tackle. 14-yard line. with the tackle. Chicago now leading Indianapolis by 7, 17 to 10. A bagel touchdown pass. tackle. Mike Charles may have jumped. He did. Jim Zorn just about makes the handoff and you can see Mike Charles was clearly ahead of the snap. Now Green Bay is trying possibly with Eddie Lee Ivory to make a big play but they'll come back and take the penalty, have a first down and goal to go on the six yard line. First down and about five to go. They can figure the first down before going in. They split the difference to the goal line. Rutgers is in that offensive line. Here it is! Knocked away! Gary Ellis almost! 
was had it. He had the daylight, and Hugh Green closed the door, but it will be first down and goal to go as Jim Thorne becomes the cheerleader. Jim Thorne now on a delay. Now watch Gary Ellis, number 31. Now there's the hit by Hugh Green, but watch Bud Brown, 43, come over and keep him out of the end zone. Outstanding play by the free safety. First down, goal to go, and Ivory is there. It'll be Ivory, hit at the top of the pile, leaves, does he get it? There's no signal. It'll be second down and goal to go. The jump line is the neutral zone between offense and defense. Now watch. Go on top. Clear it. Boom. There's somebody there. Alex Boyer, 54, to stop it. Now, the offensive line in Green Bay is going to have to push the defensive line of Miami back and up so those backs can clear the jump line. Gary Ellis and Jesse Clark are the backs. Second down, goal to go. Just the length of the football away. 6-2, Thorne. No signal. It's the ball and not the body. You're right, Charlie. He held the ball back. The ball apparently didn't go over the plane of the goal line. If he takes a snap and holds the ball down around his stomach and goes in, Watch just Jim to his Zorn chest, now. it's not going to count. As he pops over the top, you can see what he didn't do. He had the ball back, and the ball never clears the plane of the goal line. Now we have a third down. Give the ball to one of those big backs that you pay to run the football. Or go in behind your blocking right guard. If right. you're a green, a green Bay traditionalist. Right. Go in behind that baby grand piano, Ron Halston, for the touchdown. No! What do you do now? Wow. I really pushed away. Wait a minute. Touchdown! You don't have to worry about it. Finally, the signal. There's a wall right there. We cannot see it. Apparently, Eddie Lee Ivory must have crossed the plane, but I believe both those officials should have made a more decisive call. They waited too long. Green Bay with the lead. They led early in the game 3-0. Now they lead 23-20. Extra point is good. Green Bay 24, Miami 20. Eight minutes, 32 seconds left. This is Charlie Jones, Sam Rattigliano. Eight minutes, 32 seconds left to go at Lambeau Field. And Green Bay leads Miami 24 to 20. Al Del Greco kicking off. What about that block extra point in the first half by Green Bay? The score right now would have been 24 to 21. Blackwood on the return. And he battles to the 33-yard line where Morris Turner makes the tackle. We'll go back to that touchdown by Eddie Lee Ivory. It's hard to sort out. You've got to take in the angle of the cameras and all those big bodies. Eddie Lee Ivory right now is stuck. But he bounces to the inside, and when he bounces back to the inside, the ball apparently across the plane of the goal line, but the officials took a little time to make the decision. Here we are, touchdown. 62-yard drive and 13 plays by Green Bay to take the lead, and Miami now from their own 33, but remember, Miami only has two timeouts remaining. It's there, first down. Green Bay territory. 
Mark Clayton pulls it in at the Packer 48-yard line. After that big play for the Dolphins, let's check the scoreboard in the AFC East. Miami now trails the Jets' lead and New England leading. Now remember, Miami, the Jets, and New England starting today's play all tied for first in the East with 9-4 records. A 19-yard pass play to Clayton and his Marino again. Nathan over the middle, the intended receiver, Ryan Noble, trying to pick off the interception, but it's incomplete. So it'll be second down and 10 at the Green Bay 48. yard line so he has seven it'll be third down and three as randy scott makes the tackle so that means that marino has now completed 24 of 38 passes for 249 yards in the playoffs miami new england the jets denver the raiders they're all nine four cleveland seven six they're in the central division they're leading the central division so remember the champions of the east central and west Plus the two wild cards make the playoff. Third and three. Push down. Matt Moore, big play to the 26-yard line. 15 yards, Gary Hayes with the tackle. And Miami converting on a third down and three. Well, look at it from ground level. Matt Moore had a one-on-one -on -one with 27, Gary Hayes. He goes to the outside, jukes, and breaks clean to the inside. Marino sees him. Now watch Nat Moore and Yardage hold on to that football because he does not want to fumble. Six minutes and 20 seconds left in the game. First down, Miami. Green Bay, 26. Miami trails by four. Over the middle to Tony Nathan. Second down and ten. Marino's outside receivers are obviously being doubled. That's why he's trying to go to his inside receivers, Tony Nathan and Nat Moore. Duper with four receptions at 44 yards. Clayton six for 76 yards. Those are his wide men, but most of the day they've been shut down. They take it away from him and make him come back over the middle. to the 20-yard line. Ryan Noble with the stop gain of six. Third down and four at the Green Bay 20. And the clock continues, 5.53 and counting. They, the way Miami moves the ball, they want to also come out of this with a field goal because if they can hold Green Bay, Marino can move this football team, they can come back with a game-winning field goal. But how about that block extra point in the first half? Miami could be in position right now with a field goal to tie it up. Third down and four. First down and four. Tony Nathan, 17 yards to the three. First down and goal to go. Watch him on Duke right now. You gotta stop him on the line of scrimmage. Run with him on the line of scrimmage, keep him from going inside, have someone backing you up all the way, and that's why Lewis can play it that way, and Tony Nathan was wide open. Marino was looking for the end zone, found Nathan, first and goal inside the three. And we've got a timeout. Green Bay takes their first timeout of the second half, Stopping the clock with 4.48 left to go in the game as Miami threatens. The 
scoring by quarters. Green Bay 24, Miami 24 minutes, 48 seconds left to go in the game. Miami at the Packer three-yard line. First down goal to go, and Tom Davenport, who has scored 10 touchdowns this year, is in the ballgame. He threw the ball to go. behind Tony Nathan. Had he hit Tony Nathan right away, he would have been in the end zone for touchdown. George Cumbie bringing down Tony Nathan. Two-yard line, second down, goal to go. Three tight ends, Hardy, Johnson, and Rose in the offensive set. Davenport, the running back. <laughs> Davenport stopped by Randy Scott. Third down, goal to go. Peter. Loss of a yard. Just inside the three. They're going to have to throw the ball and uh, apparently going to have to kick the field goal. This will be a play action pass. Here's pressure. Gets it up. It's there. It is caught. Touchdown. Joe Rowe. Miami back in the lead. We'd like to welcome those of you that just joined us as the Miami Dolphins just moved out in front of Green Bay, 26 to 24, on this touchdown pass, Dan Marino to Joe Rose. Play action pass right now. He's trying to find Joe Rose. It's good coverage by 91. Brian Noble. Brian Noble, a rookie linebacker, but Joe Rose makes a big, big catch. And the extra point by... Wad Reves is good and is now Miami 27, Green Bay 24 with 318 left to go in the ball game as the Dolphins just moved 67 yards in 10 plays. And Dan Marino has now thrown four touchdown passes in the ball game to Moore, Nathan, Bennett, and Rose. 27, 24. Miami with that miss extra point. And that was on the first touchdown when they moved out in front 6-3 to three with 148 to go in the first quarter. So now the Green Bay Packers with plenty of time, but only two timeouts remaining, as do the Dolphins. But 318 on the clock. And the way that Jim Zorn has been throwing the ball in the second half, still an opportunity to play the short field. What they want to do now is to move to the Miami 30-yard line, or maybe the 25, but in that neighborhood and go for the tying field goal and then go for overtime. They've the had uh, excellent field position on their returns. It's going to be important for Green Bay right now to get this ball returned beyond the 30-yard line. And Epps will take it at the 8. He's to the 20, to the 30. of the field goal. Now watch Epps. It's a short kick. Now watch Epps follow his blocking, but he's got lightning speed. He gets a good block there, and now what he wants to do is just change hands in case you fumble the football, stay in bounds. He gets hit by Fuad Rivaz, number seven, and they're up on the Miami 45-yard line. 47 yards on the return by Epps. He's shaken up. Denard replaces him first down. Thorn with pressure pass incomplete to Eddie Lee Ivory. 
everybody kind of settles down. The ball at the Miami 45. It'll be second down in 10, and a look at the clock shows three minutes and two seconds. That can be an eternity in a football game. And a reminder, be sure to stay tuned for the second half of the doubleheader. Dick Enberg and Merlin Olsen, they're at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado, and they've, they've got a kickoff just about four or five minutes away. And as soon as this game is, is over, we'll be joining them. Of course, it could be a while. It could be overtime. George stands in. This one behind Jesse Clark. So now it is third down and ten. The playoff picture in the NFC shows Chicago already there. Dallas, Rams, Giants, San Francisco, Detroit, Washington. And we'll go to that second page. And Green Bay with a 6-7 record. They can pull this one out. If they can come from behind. They need to win their last three to be 9-7. And, and they've got a shot at the playoff. Dallas loses today. Yeah. They tied with the New York Giants. Three wide receivers for Green Bay. Epps back in with Denard and Loftus. Third down and 10. Green Bay needs 10. It is intercepted. Paul Lankford has the ball for Miami. Denard, the intended receiver, and Lankford, who's been burned a couple of times in the ballgame, comes up with a key interception. Jim's on his back to pass. He's trying to find Denard, who scored a touchdown, had a key reception, and this is excellent coverage. And the thing that Lankford does so well, he has good presence, and he finds the ball. Now lay down because there's less than three minutes to go, and you don't want to fumble the football. Now... The second down throw by Zorn was clearly a first down throw to Jesse Clark, but he threw it a little bit behind. Miami at their own 30-yard line, first down. The Dolphins with the lead now, 27-24. So we're looking right now at that three-way tie in the East remaining. Here is Tony Nathan, almost backed it loose. He was stopped at the 35, backpedaled out to the 38, maybe the 39-yard line. Tom Flynn and Tim Lewis stopped him. It'll be second down. And Green Bay stops the clock now at the 2.39 mark. So that means they have one timeout remaining. They're playing their timeouts prior to the two-minute warning because they will have the clock stopped there. They hope that the defense can hold them. They can take over just past the two-minute warning. And on offense, they can control the clock with incomplete passes and by throwing out of, you know, the throwing two receivers down the sideline and having them come out of bounds. What Green Bay needs to do is to get the ball as soon as possible. Miami's thinking right now, it's second down and two yards to go. What they're saying is, on second down, let's get one yard. On third down, let's pick up the other yard. Let's have uh, Green Bay now exhaust their final timeout because Green Bay lost a key timeout inside the five-yard line when Miami had the ball before they scored the touchdown. And the reason that Green Bay had to take that time out is they were late making some situation substitutions. The players were not going to get there in time, and they would have had one of those situations with 12 men on the field, which would have cost them the penalty, and they didn't want to take that chance. This is now a final, Chicago 17, Indianapolis 10, but... The Bears, I think, had all they could handle with the Colts. They didn't figure it be that tough a ball game. New England. New England now with a record of 10-4. and four, As they defeat Detroit, 23-6. to six. Those are the two finals that we have at this point. And here we have two minutes and 39 seconds left of the ball game with Miami leading by three, 27-24. At the end of the first quarter, the Dolphins led 6-3 led 20 to 3 and very handily at halftime and they were overpowering in the last two minutes of the first half but Green Bay came roaring back in the third to make it 20 to 17 after three and now Marino's moving some people about in his offense and he's running the clock down Woody Bennett will end up shy of the first down he needed two and he'll only get one so it'll be third down in a yard, and Cincinnati just continues to roll 50 to 17 over Dallas. In the Dallas has given up 94 points in the last two ball games between uh, Chicago and uh, Cincinnati. 
And now Green Bay will take their last timeout, stopping the clock with 2.21 left to go. So it'll be third down and still a couple to go. St. Louis back winning, this time over New Orleans, 28-16. to 16. It's been a tough, long season for both of those ball clubs. That's John Sandusky with the blue jacket on the left, the offensive coordinator. Of course, that's uh, Forrest Gregg right in the middle of your screen. And Miami right now needs just to give the ball to Davenport to pick up this first down. If they don't pick up the first down, punt the football and play defense. The brain trust is on the sideline right now with Don Shula. I don't think they're going to throw this football because they want to use that clock and they only have one yard to go and it will be key right now because Green Bay only has one timeout left? No, they're out of timeouts. They're out of timeouts, and uh, all they have left right now is the two-minute warning. And the uh, three that are tied in the East, Miami leading by three. Of course, this game with 2.21 to go. Jets leading by 14 over Buffalo. Handily in the fourth right now. New England defeating Detroit. That is now a final. So New England, a record 10-4. The Jets are looking at 10-4. Miami right now is hoping for a 10-4. Green Bay Vice. Well, it's a cold vice in Green Bay. Trying to clamp the Dolphins. They still have time. Let's see what Miami can come up with. You mean Green Bay ice, don't you, Charlie? I think Not that's ice. a closer determination. Yes. Take the V out of that. Defensive play. They're going to throw the ball. First down. Dan Johnson. 61 yards. Who would have thought that Miami would wrap it up this way? That's what you call audacity. You have to have audacity to make a play like that because it was very, very obvious that Green Bay was surprised. And Dan Johnson went in for the touchdown. That was Don Shula's call on the sideline. And that's what separates the uh, playoff and Super Bowl teams. They have so much confidence in what they do. And it was not a gamble because you have to know when to gamble. 61 yards, 70 on the drive in three plays. The extra point is good. And Miami is comfortably in front now by a score of 34 to 24. Let's take another look. Dan Marino, right now, because of the play action fake, everybody was full. And there's 87, uh, the Green Bay of uh, Miami, Dan Johnson going in for the score. And isn't that sweet right now to be running that last 10 yards unmolested? Excellent call on the part of the Miami bench. And for Dan Marino, that is his fifth touchdown pass in the ball game. And he has completed 30 of 44 for 345 yards and five touchdowns. And coming up next on NBC Sports, the second half of our doubleheader, most of you will see the battle for sole possession of first place in the West between the Raiders and the Broncos. Some of you to see Cleveland as Seattle. Your team plays here. We'll kick off the second half of our doubleheader here on NBC Sports. Two minutes and ten seconds left to go here at Lambeau Field. And they have time. They come down now and get a big play and get on the board. They get onside kick and be in position for the tying field goal. So they do have time. But it's a long road for the backers, Ellerson. No, that's Ken Stills on the return. As we pause briefly for station identification, this is the NBC Television Network. WLUK 11, Green Bay. Jim Zorn goes to work, trailing now by 10 with two minutes and two seconds left in the ball game, and the line of scrimmage will be the Green Bay 34-yard line. And Zorn, as Sam said, needs to score very quickly, though. Needs to put the ball up deep, maybe a pass interference, and maybe an outstanding play by Epps or Lofton. But they've got to get the ball upfield quickly. No 
tight end, going with three wide receivers. And an inside handoff to Clark. And Clark to the 43-yard line. He'll pick up nine. It'll be second down and a yard, but the clock will be stopped with a two-minute warning, and we'll be back in just a moment. Sam, what about the audacity of that call by Don Shula? The same one that Dwight Eisenhower made <laughs> on June 6th to go no, ahead and take the beachhead. I would, beach I would I wouldn't calls, put that in the same category. But though. those kind of calls are what win the ball game yeah. for you. In the military, they say the element of surprise. Mm -hmm. And the call had audacity and certainly the element of surprise and broke the game wide open. Yes. So now the Packers very close just a moment ago. And now with their problems, trailing by 10. And they are out of timeout. But still, the possibility looms. It's been done before, and it will be done again. The question is, will it be done today? Can you pick up 10, 10 points with a minute 57 to go and no timeout? Well, they're at midfield. They need a big play, and then an onside kick. And they have a chance. Second and two. Miami is deep, making sure that that big play will be taken away. Dorn just has to drop this one off. He was running out of time. Jesse Clark, the intended receiver. And it'll be third down. Third and down a, and two. That was a screen pass, and that's what Miami wants at this point right now is to just have Green Bay throw the ball inside, run the clock down, and make those tackles and have to have Green Bay go into a two-minute offense. They have to throw the ball upfield. They need a big play right now. Third down and two. Deep over the middle. This is Denard, and he's got the first down. No huddle. No huddle. Hurry up, Jim. Get your, get your offense on the line of scrimmage. You're fighting the clock. 15 yards on the play, and a first down at the 42-yard line of Miami. 1.30 left. complete to the 39-yard line. It's only three yards, second down and seven. Hugh Green making the tackle. It was Eddie Lee Ivory that pulled it in. Now there's another possibility, and that is you can go for the field goal, then on sides and go for the touchdown. You can do it in either order. Dorn feeling pressure from behind. You better get rid of it. It is intercepted it. That'll do it. Hit from behind by George Little. Alex Moyer then gets the interception as Zorn is hit. The defense does it for Miami. With the clock on its countdown and Green Bay out of timeout. This is third down and Miami just running the clock down, stepping back, downing the ball and letting the clock go. Good afternoon for Jim Zorn. But a better afternoon for the Miami Dolphins. The final here, Miami 34, Green Bay 24, and the Miami Dolphins have a record of 10 and